Welcome to another VBA tutorial. In today's video, we are shifting gears away from Excel temporarily, and we are going back into PowerPoint VBA. So in today's video, we are gonna create two little macros that I know for a lot of people will probably save them a tremendous amount of time because if you're like me, you're a perfectionist in PowerPoint, and you like to make sure that things all match the same size or things along that nature. And so today we're gonna make two little uh, macros basically that will allow us to do things like this. So for example, um, you know, maybe I have an image right here and it's of this size and I wanna play, apply the dimensions of this particular shape to uh, maybe an image on a different slide or a shape on a different slide, right? So with this one, what we can do is we can select our image and here I already have the macros enabled and everything like that. If I click this little button, it will basically take the dimensions of this shape, store it in some variables. And then if I go to this little shape right here and I select it and then I do the shape apply, it will apply the same exact dimensions that is with these, this particular shape. So it took the dimensions from this shape and applied it to the shape that I then selected. So we're gonna create um, some macros in PowerPoint VBA that will allow us to do this. And one of the coolest things I love about PowerPoint is I can press Control Z and it will take us back to the original uh, dimensions. It's so cool. Okay, so with that being said, we're gonna jump into our VBA editor. So we're gonna go to our developer tab, then our Visual Basic icon, and then from here, we can start writing our uh, subroutines. And so the first thing that we're actually gonna do is we're gonna declare our variables first, but these are gonna be special types of variables. So these are gonna be called private variables. Uh, with private variables, we can access them from anywhere within the actual module itself. So any subroutine that we create in here, if we do one, two, or three, we can access those same variables without having to re-declare them. So this comes in handy when we wanna kind of reuse existing variables. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna declare uh, our variables. And so the first one is gonna be called private. So this means it's a private variable. And there's gonna be a couple that are gonna be of the same data type. So the first one is shape left. Uh, the next one is shape height. The next one is shape top. And then the final one is shape width. And then these ones will be uh, as a data type long. So uh, this will be able to store the dimensions of our shape uh, within these variables. And so that's kind of the whole logic behind this one. And then the next one is gonna be the actual selection itself. So the actual selection that we have in our particular um, window. And what we'll do is we'll call this PowerPoint shape, but really it's a selection. So it's a selection object. You know, people would kind of debate if that's probably the proper naming. Maybe I should do PowerPoint selection. But my kind of goal with this is to make sure that these people know it has to be a PowerPoint shape, uh, the one that we're selecting. So that's kind of my logic behind it. The first uh, subroutine that we're going to do is we're going to create the one that will find the dimension. So this is the one where we select our shape and then if we click the find dimensions, it will take the dimensions of that shape and then store it in the variables that we've declared up above. So we're gonna create a new subroutine called find dimensions. We're gonna put our little brackets and sub. And then the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna get the active selection that we currently have in our window. And so uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set our PPT shape equal to the active selection in our window. And so what this is gonna do is we're gonna set that PPT shape equal to the active window. So the one that we see when we are in PowerPoint, and we're gonna just go to the selection property of that window. So whatever we have selected, that is gonna be our PowerPoint shape. And then, so the next thing that we gotta do though, is we have to make sure that we're actually working with a shape because if we're not working with a shape and then we try to go to retrieve the dimensions, it's gonna return an error. And so this is important because this will make our code more robust and say, hey, wait a minute, you actually haven't selected a shape, you've selected something else. Maybe you've selected some font or something like that. And I wanna make sure that the object that we're working with is a shape in PowerPoint. So what we'll say is if the shape, oh, sorry, if the selection 
is a shape, then retrieve the dimensions. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say if the PPT shape, so if the type of selection, the type of selection that we have is a PP selection shapes, so if it's a selection of a shape, then go on to the next part basically. And so we'll say, uh, well, we won't say end if at this point. There's actually another thing that we'll do next, but I'll put else and then end if. So this is just a little placeholder at that point. And then what we're going to say is, okay, take the current, so with the PPT shape, uh, what we're going to do is say, hey, get the dimensions with it. So we'll close off our width statement. And what we're going to say is the shape height variable is equal to the dot shape range, so the actual range of shapes that we have selected, because you can technically have more than one selected now. It's not going to really make sense if you have multiple shapes collected uh, in this situation. So really, it's just going to always be one. But we're going to go into our shape range, and then we're going to get the height uh, property of it. And then the next one is the shape left. This will be the shape range dot left. This one will be the shape top. This will be the shape range dot top. And then the final one will be the shape width. And then this one will be the dot shape range dot width. Okay, so let me clean it up and do some formatting. So we'll indent this, put a little space in between that. And uh, something else I want to do is uh, I kind of want to communicate to the user and say, hey, uh, if the shape that you're selecting, if it's not a shape, I kind of want to let them know. So I want to display a message box that will say, hey, the shape that you've selected actually isn't a PowerPoint uh, a shape. So we're going to say it's message box. So if it's not a selection shape, what we'll say is it's uh, the object you have selected is not a PowerPoint shape object. Please select a shape. And then we'll close that off. We'll put it as a BB critical uh, window. And then we'll have a title that says macro error shape finder. Perfect. And then that should do that one. So we've now selected and we've, we've selected our shape. We've got the dimensions. Let's now apply the dimensions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy this one and I'm just gonna put it right below. And we'll call this one apply dimensions. And for each one of these, because I already have the ones that I already put on the, the ribbon itself, I'm going to put these ones as two, just so that way we can distinguish them. And then really the only thing that we're going to change here is we're just going to change the order of, of, of this, basically. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of just switch the order a little bit. So we're going to delete this. We're going to delete that going to delete this and then this one is now kind of the reverse order so now it's going to be shape height the next one will be shape left the next one will be shape top and then the next one will be shape width and then I'll also make sure to change this one and say uh, actually this one will be the uh, shape apply one so just so that way they know it's like okay this is this is for the one where I'm trying to apply it. Uh, it still has to be a shape. So uh, other than that, that, that's pretty much the entire script. Where it's really not a lot if you think about it, but this is kind of the beauty of macros. We wrote a couple lines of code, but this is going to save us a tremendous amount of time, which we will love about it. Okay, so with this, now we're going to kind of go back in to our particular uh, PowerPoint presentation and what we're going to do is we're going to add a new tab to our ribbon and then add these macros to it. So I'm going to close this one out and the idea is to kind of recreate something like this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go down to options and then from here I'm going to go to customize ribbon and then I can always add a new group for example. So if I wanted to I could add a new tab so maybe I'll say, hey, create a new tab. I'll select the top portion of it and I'll say rename and I'll call this one macros two. And then I'll rename the group. So a group can contain uh, multiple icons associated with it. So I'll rename my group to say uh, uh, shape macros two. And then what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to add uh, two of my macros to this little group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here with the choose commands from. I'm going to go down to macros. And then as you can tell right here, there's these other two. It's kind of hard to read it, unfortunately. Uh, you just kind of have to look at it and then put it over here. And then when you do that, you can see it's the second one. So this is shape finder uh, two. And then this will be the shape. Uh, I want this one to be first. So I'll say shape finder. So this is the find, this is the apply. And then if I want to, I can also edit these uh, little icons themselves. So I can say, hey, rename it. And I'll say shape, uh, shape apply two. And I'll have this one be, I don't know. We'll have it just be that icon. And then this one will be shape find two. And then this one will be the down arrow. Perfect. And if I press OK, it will create a new little tab right here. So now there's macros two. And then there's shape find two and shape apply two that belong to the shape macros two. And so now if I select this one, for example, and I resize it, well, I'll do control to make it, make it look all nice. And I say, OK, grab it, then select my next one. Now I can just easily select each image and then bam, everything works smoothly. So it's a really cool macro. It saves us a lot of time. Hopefully you guys find this one useful. You know, if you have any questions about what we made today, or maybe you have a suggestion for another macro that you think other people would want to see, you know, please put those uh, down in the comments below. Always appreciate it. And then also, if you could make sure to like the video, uh, you know, we always appreciate that support that you guys give us. And we want to make sure other people can find the videos as well. So it always does help. And then if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. So that way you get regular updates as we release new videos related to VBA, Python, and all that kind of fun jazz. So thanks again for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.